probably call the meeting to order. It is five o'clock. Um, Recording in progress. We do have guests, and as usual, I would ask you to introduce yourselves, please. Okay. Shelly Desher. Samantha Bowden. Okay, and we have uh, Evelyn on the Zoom. Evelyn Prim here. Okay, thank you. Um, so the first uh, item is to uh, review and amend and approve the agenda for the May 2nd, 2023 Select Board meeting action likely. And you said you had addition, Sarah? Well, actually, you have to uh, approve the minutes for the 18th. I'm sorry? You have to approve the minutes for April 18th first. I move that we accept yeah, the okay. uh, meetings, the uh, minutes of April 18th. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Now, reviewing and amending and approving the agenda. Uh, yes. And I think here comes Bridget. Um, we have... Bridget. Uh, right in the nick of time. <laughs> we have um, Anita. Now, last minute, uh, it's a new access permit for driveway access for, for David and Barbara Carkey. You guys approved one before. They're, they're just moving it a little bit, so that needs to be approved. And this is a letter of intent for, to participate in the Municipal Roads Grants uh, and, and, and Aid Program. It's not a commitment. It's not a contract. It's not an agreement. It's just saying, yes, we want to participate. It needs to be submitted by Friday. So, you know, this kind of, it's not a big deal. That's something that requires a motion? Uh, I don't know. I just got to get it in the minutes because it's, no, it's not binding. You guys do it every single year. Okay. And All right. Want to give it to me? Also, uh, uh, Mitch dropped off some mowing bids. He doesn't know if the select board needs to approve them or not, but there you have them there. So that's that. We have reviewed them in the past, yeah. So you just need so to two. Yeah. Okay. And then that's it. I'm just going to leave this for you when you guys this, this right way for me. And then under other business, I'll talk about the town hall meeting. And okay. Yep. I'm anxious to hear. Okay. okay. So with those changes, is there a motion to approve the uh, agenda for today's meeting? Tonight's meeting. Make that motion. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, moved by Randy, seconded by Victor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've approved our agenda. Reviewing and updating the town's personnel policy action likely. So we have been given 25 minutes. <laughs> There's no action, it's just to start talking about it. No, 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 I get it. So that's what I was going to say. So this is the beginning of the discussion, not, not the end of the discussion. So what I would suggest we do is go through, starting at page one, and pick out the things that we want to discuss talk about. Yes, and then maybe we can have start the discussion, as they said. So to my reading of this, I don't think there's anything under title and authority we need to deal with, section one nor is there anything in persons covered, nor is there anything in equal employment opportunity, conduct of employees. Is there anything we want to do about that? thing we had on that, Peter, was um, social media. And it was, I think it was deemed, if I'm not mistaken, that what somebody puts on their own social media is... Uh, was there a section that we didn't talk about that we didn't, we didn't have them. Well, no. oh, there's nothing in there. Uh, section 4 is just on the dash first page was right. for conduct of employees. Okay. I, I am remembering that the same way, Victor, that the discussion was that as long as folks are not 
putting forth representation as town employees and or, expressing opinions as a town employee town that employees. that we weren't. So there's this having been free to get that to. Yes, correct. So we need to add social media language, right? The other thing I had on my notes, and I don't know if it fall under this, but at one time you guys talked about reviews or discipline policies or we get something to, we to get that. to reviews further along here. We do get to yeah. okay. All right. So that would be a separate okay. Whole separate yeah, section twelve is performance evaluations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay, so here we go. Hours of service and pay periods. We know we need to talk about that, right? Or maybe we don't. It is a correct representation of how we do payroll during the, right? The last line in section five. That payroll is distributed bi-weekly, yes. Payroll falls on a holiday. Payroll will be generated on Wednesday, Wednesday of the pay week. <clears throat> and the pay period runs from 12 a.m. on Saturday to 11.59 p.m. Friday. Yeah, that's, that's correct. How we calculate it. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, the big question in my mind is that we've talked about in the past is just the, the switch between eight hour days and 10 hour days and, summer hours. And, and the summer hours conversation. So the question is, the question is, is the language in here the correct language for the personnel policy and that should be discussed outside the personnel policy? Or should there be a section called summer work hours that talks about at the discretion of the select board kind of thing? So well, so I mean, it already discusses the, so the regular work week and, and you know, how it is, uh, it's able to be varied upon based on the road foreman and road commissioners uh, presentation to the select board. So I would think that it falls under that. It's just whether or not, you know, there's been a lot of conversation around how uh, wishy-washy that time frame is, and if the question in my mind is, do we just want to set any kind of, you know, is it Memorial Day week to Labor Day week or whatever? And I think, and for me, you know, having the extension be so long and and constantly variable, we've seen it. I've seen it change since. Like, I've participated in here three different times, it feels like. So um, I think for me, that's that's the big question, is do we want to address that or do we feel like the language covers it and you know uh, the select board takes a stance at, that, at those conversations to provide direction? See, the issue, the issue for me is that from year to year, particularly in the springtime, depending on the conditions. For me, it could be variable. I mean, when you think that mud season can last potentially until the middle of May, that we may have substantial damage left over from mud season, does that bother us that we then have people on summer hours or not? I don't know. Yeah, Eric. I will tell you how I handled it this year is, um, from what I read in the minutes last year, you guys said May 1st, they could go to summer hours. What I decided to do was switch two people from Friday and two people on Monday. So we're working the greater five days to get the roads put back to shape before we switch to our normal four tents. That gives the greater opportunity to run all week long. For the month of May? Well, until they're put back together. Until they're put which back together. Which could be two weeks, could be three weeks, I don't know. 
could be six. So there. Days. So you're you're saying that two people are doing ten hour days Monday through Thursday, and then Thir two people Tuesday are doing Tuesday through Friday. through Friday until it's all set up, and then it will be Fridays off. See, but that's that I think is a perfect example of how the policy as it's written works. That's right. That's what in my view was supposed to happen. It's it leads to, to be. flexibility for them to come make the presentation and have the select group say yes, right. that sounds good. Because I want to make sure thing, the roads are put back together before we, we do the official. I think they should be. And I think the other thing we talked about at some point through this discussion is inviting the road crew to come in and talk about this with them in the room, mm -hmm. um, which I still think is a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, don't need to do that today or tomorrow or next week, but um, I think it'd be good to hear from them, and I think it would be good for them to hear from us. But I don't think, unless anybody disagrees, that we need to change the policy as it's written. I think it covers it. The only thing we have, yeah, to, ch the only thing we have to change is that it's not. It should be discussed before you do it. It's well, approved by the select board. Well, so that's what this says. It says a regular work week for the highway department consists of 40 hours with times and schedules to be approved by the select board in consultation with the road foreman and road commissioner. Right. So for those periods of time, whenever there's a change, in my mind, this says that you two should consult and then come to the board with a recommendation Correct. the board can consider and approve or deny. I agree with you 100%. But we didn't do that, and we should, I guess. Yeah. I didn't, I wasn't aware we had to do that. So I think the lang for me, the language provides flexibility at the same time as, as you know, giving input and approval from, from the board. Um, you know, the length of, the length of summer hours and things like that, while it's on my mind, uh, you know, is a different issue than than what the policy says specifically here. Unless folks want to take a more firm stance on that, but my my um, focus is uh, I would like to see us give Eric as much leeway as we can on you know topics like that because who else knows better than he? on what hours and who, when they should be working. We trust them all winter to be working when it's, when to come out and when to go home. So, yeah, that's all I was, and, and I think we did bring it up in April, but then we postponed it. But now we all know. Yeah. And we I think, I think this language, you know, I don't think every, I mean, the question is, this sounds like every change Every change in the regular hours needs to go from Eric to Vic to us, okay? And I think that's fine. But in the winter time with snow and in mud season with mud and when we have storms and when we have other stuff, absolutely, Eric needs to have the discretion to call him in. Uh, it doesn't say what regular work hours I think, are. I think that's 40 hours. That's after, that's outside of this conversation. I, yep, I think I he's, got the, he's got the discretion to, to you know, create the work as needed, uh, or the work, uh, the availability of work for those guys as we need. It's just the, the normal work times right. Um, right. when that extra, that extra duty isn't needed. You know, and he needs to manage sick time and vacation time and all that stuff so that there's coverage, and that's definitely within his purview. Yeah. And I guess I would only say from the perspective of, um, you know, what the townspeople perceive um, is that, and this all, the only reason I know about this is because we have a Facebook <coughs> neighborhood group and everyone loves to complain about the only thing they can complain about, which is the roads. Um, and so, like, just from the perspective of, you know, if there's a week of all rain, right, and then it's a beautiful sunny day on Friday and no one sees the road out, you know, the road crew out there. I mean, I think you probably already do this. You probably already are like, okay, we know that, that there's something this week. Right, there's just something weird going on with the weather and like things have to change, your schedule has to change a little bit. Um, because it's really about perception, because no, I mean, I don't know all what you, perception. yeah, you know, and I don't know what you guys do all day, but I know you're not just sitting there when it rains, right? You're doing something. Mm -hmm. 
And um, and so, you know, but let's just hope it's, it's not sunny I agree, Friday, whether it's winter or summer or whatever it is, you know, trying to manage, trying to manage and take a look at the weather and do what makes sense. Yes, absolutely. But I don't think that needs to be addressed. No, it doesn't. It already is in no. here. Can I, can I ask what the uh, normal hours of operation have been? I feel like I know, but just so that it's captured it's in the It's been minutes. 6 to 2.30. For the five days. God, that's so should we say that in here? Oh, like nine o'clock, is it? Well, no, I don't know. Like, what if you're a parent of a young kid? You're not going to get in there at six. Maybe you're going to want to work from eight to four thirty. I don't think we should put in that time. Well, we're not going to make an exception for one member of the road crew. I don't think. Well, if you're family friendly, you might. <laughs> I don't know. And have them working by himself for two hours in the afternoon and come in two hours late in the morning? I, I'm just saying, I don't think we want to put it in here. There may be some opportunities, there may be some situations where the time changes. I just think part of the problem you're talking about is people see members of the road crew stopping work at 2.30 in the afternoon and they think, what the hell's going on? Why are they leaving at 2.30 in the afternoon when the roads are still bumpy or icy or And then they call Sarah and says well, they, they work eight hours a day, five days a week. Well, if, if the roads are still icy, we won't be going home anyway. Yeah. All I'm saying is I don't think it hurts to put in what the regular hours are. It's a, it's but a, I mean, it's how, many, how many members of the community are going to be reading the personnel policy anyway? Nobody, right? No, it's perception. Like it was, it's all perception. But with that said, I understand, I question myself the six o'clock in the wintertime. But when you have got school buses, it, it actually saves. It works perfect. Yeah, it works. It works. We're able to make sure we're out before right. the buses are out. Yeah, I don't, sense. I'm not so sure. I, and, and I know we have a couple of people that really, maybe three, maybe four, I don't know, uh, that like to go to work at six instead of going to work seven to 3.30. I don't know. It just seems to work, especially in the wintertime. And yeah, but I mean, you change your hours to ten hours sometime during the summer. Would you change your hours from seven to four thirty instead of six to six to four thirty? Go to seven to five thirty. I wouldn't want to do that. Huh? I wouldn't want to do that. No, because you haven't. But. But I think, so during, you know, one of the questions that comes into my mind is, you know, road condition in the, in the shoulder seasons when you're not plowing, when you're not having to maintain roads for buses, so mm -hmm. to speak, you're dealing with mud mitigation, mm -hmm. it's still dark out, if you're doing brush cutting or anything like that, you know, the, some of the questions that I've fielded mm -hmm. are, okay, what are they doing till, uh, Till it's light enough out to get out working, well, and then they're not out. Season, and, I mean, and the response that I've had thus far is, though, well, they're get preparing for the day. Oh yeah, you get, there's plenty to do. But I, I will, you know, that's the those are the things that you know, um, being in this position that that I've fielded mm -hmm. questions on. I don't know about the rest of you, but it's like, yeah, okay, similar. so if it's if it's dark and they're not ready to get out working because it's not light enough out for them to see safely you know are they just sitting around drinking coffee you know whatever you know that's that's from the public's view you know that's the mentality for some folks well, coming through that. so um i you know personally um especially during the springtime when it gets light earlier once daylight the the time change has has taken place you know it's get out there nice and early and, and just start the day and go um, it's a lot easier so um, I don't necessarily think it needs to be, uh, you know, put into the to the policy uh, what those hours are because they could potentially change if, as a as a manager of of those changes. folks, if you had a bunch of um, those, if the majority of the crew, it worked better to start at seven o'clock, having the ability to move that from six to seven. I think that's in, in the best interest of, of having Eric have a little bit of wiggle room there. So I don't, I don't necessarily think putting it in here. I do 
I do feel like posting those hours once they're changed and maybe periodically for the town residents to know what they are is important, especially during the transition between mm -hmm. the five uh, day work week and the four day work week, um, just so people know. That's, that's my thought on it. Anything else? Bridget, you're being very quiet over there. I'm usually very quiet. <laughs> Sometimes I break out of my MO. I, I have nothing further to add. Okay. Well, I like the idea of Eric and Victor having flexibility to manage the road crew the best they can for the benefit of the town. And if from time to time we get from complaints from people, we need to be able to deliver that message to them, I guess is what I'm saying. So we're going to leave it alone for the time being. And Eric and I are probably be the only one to get a complaint. Maybe not. Oh, no. Maybe uh, not. Well, we can, uh, if we make major changes, we can certainly let people know. You know, I do think, I do think having the hours on the town website and when they change, posting them on Front Porch Forum makes sense. That's, that's. I mean, it's easy enough to do. You got to remember to do it. I understand that. One more thing you got to remember to do, but um, I think that makes sense. Yep. And maybe you might stop some of the phone calls. Maybe. I think one of the only other pieces in this section that, that catches my eye, be, if we're not posting work hours or we don't have set work hours, is the last sentence of paragraph three that says employees who are calling in sick are expected to notify their supervisor as soon as possible, but no later than 8.30 a.m. Um, as, a, as a supervisor, I would appreciate having a time limit from the start of the work day to say what that is, because otherwise you're, guess, you're just guessing. You're two and a half hours in with this with this policy and somebody hasn't showed, showed up yet, yet. you don't know why before they haven't showed in or showed up or called potentially and Stop. they're still following the policy so i don't know what your feelings are on that but no, i'd rather issue, see it something like it hasn't been an issue what typically happens now do they call you about the time they're supposed to be there oh no i usually i usually hear before yeah whenever they've is either the night before or that morning before like five 435 o'clock so does it make sense instead of saying no later than 830 to say as soon as possible but no later than an hour after the start of work or something like that that's where I was going with it that way it's not a set 830 that I mean sense. obviously if there's some set of special circumstances like somebody's in the ER at the hospital or in dire distress or whatever. Oh, of course. Hey, you know, it is whatever, but if they've got a sore throat and a bad cough. And you want it to, the reason that you want to have something in there is because in the event that you need to do a, you know, personal corrective action, you can say you haven't been calling Correct. within an hour. <clears throat> that makes sense to everyone? Sure. Okay. So you guys, just to recap, there's not the only wording you would like added is maybe uh, the, the the end of the third paragraph about calling as soon as possible, no later than an hour into the workday. From the start of the workday. From the start of the workday, yeah. Right. And delete the eight thirty. So we're not putting in anything about summer hours, right? No. no. Okay, just clarifying. Fortuities and gifts. Sounds fine to me. Outside employment. The piece that jumps out at me in this as I read through it is um, there's a, the second sentence in the, in the first paragraph that says employees may not engage in any outside business activities during their normal working hours. Um, <laughs> that's a problem. It, Right. I mean, the problem is so if somebody's somebody on takes vacation. a vacation day, 
And I remember, so I remember this coming up in the past. Somebody takes a vacation day and they're conducting their own business when they're taking a vacation from the town. On a, on a, on a good sunny day. And, and it's, there's the, the perception. Yeah. Well, that's, so that's, that's the conversation, right? Is, um, uh, when I read this, I don't think about the person who takes a vacation uh, takes a week off or something and goes and helps their brother-in-law who's running a construction business or whatever, you know, and they're just doing their own thing. But I think about, you know, somebody who has, a, you know, uh, an official secondary business that they're operating on and if they're on vacation time, they're out there during normal business hours that are out there within town doing their work. And what does that look well, this came what up is, in conjunction with our former road commissioner. Absolutely. Right. You know, what does that look like, um, you know, while at the same time allowing folks the ability to, you know, um, better their, their situation. So the question is, though, normal working hours, does that mean including vacation time? Yes, because it's during the normal working hours. So what language do you put in there to fix that? Do you say employees may not engage in any outside business activity during their work hours for the town? And you're saying vacation is also work hours for the town? No, I'm saying it's not. Well, if you say this is if you say during their work their work hours, not normal working hours, their work hours. So that's the proposed that's your proposed change which, or what she's yeah what she's like saying that. is the way that this is worded now right now the way i read this is they would be excluded from any opportunity correct. of doing any correct. additional work i agree during that 6 to 2 to 2 30 time frame or whatever the published normal working hours are for, for that, that period, period of time right which are not published so but we hope they're going to be But all I'm saying is, you know, if somebody is taking legitimate time off and they're choosing to engage in their side hack job during that period of time, that should be okay. I don't see why it wouldn't be okay. Say that again, please. If, if somebody has a side gig. Okay, they're mowing lawns. For they're, mowing, they're mowing yeah. lawns, yeah. evenings, weekends, whenever yeah. they're not working. Right. And they take a week's vacation. Yeah. And they're out mowing lawns on their lawn mowing job during that week of vacation. Week of vacation, right. They should be able to do that. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So how do we change the language so it reflects that? My suggestion was to say during their working hours, which means not vacation to me. But I don't know whether that's enough or clear well, enough. Well, I or... mean, you could, you could simply add um excluding approved pto at the end of that sentence so that they've got an approved pto there you go the, i like from, that better from their supervisor it's documented that they're that they're mm -hmm. off and during that period of time they can engage in activities that they want to engage got it in. i like that and the other thing it doesn't do is what we don't want to have is somebody take a sick day and be out there doing their side act correct right? Correct. Well, paid so time off is PTO. Time no, approved too. time approved. off. Approved. Well, you could approve sick time too, and someone might be like, "I don't feel yeah, well." But, but PTO, right? But PTO, long. PTO in here is different than sick time, I believe. We'll paid get there. Off, you have a definition in there for sick leave? I believe we do. Well, maybe you just want to say sick time cannot be used. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I mean, you could add that. But does the supervisor really approve sick time? No, the no. employee calls no, in. No, they take the sick time. They take no. the sick time, That's so it's yeah. not approved. I mean, it's not really approving of it. It's right, just it's just done, so. But the PTO is approved. I mean, you, right. could, you could specify that it's approved vacation or personal leave. Yeah, and you could also say something about being it. Supervised, the, I mean, the, the approval. So we have, we have several categories of time off here. Yeah. We have holiday leave, that's pretty clear. We have vacation leave, we have sick leave, we have personal leave, 
and we have parental and family leave, mm. which I had forgotten about, to tell you the truth. And yeah. then we have short-term family leave. I, w I would be fine with, with specifying time. vacation and personal leave. So that's specific to those two. The well, they can also do it on their holiday leave, too. Yeah. They can work on the clothes and wife. Time off. Sure, but that's not their that's normal, not a normal yeah. work time. Okay. Right. I feel like we would be covered, and it would be clear if you just added excluding approved vacation and personal leave. Yeah. So, could you just help me with that sentence. If you want employees may not engage in any outside business activities during normal they're during their normal working hours and then and then and then just add to that sentence yeah excluding mm -hmm. vacation and personal leave yeah approved approved excluding approved vacation and personal leave Yeah, and then you then it gets dicey where you're like employees are prohibited from undertaking outside employment that interferes with their job performance or constitutes a conflict of interest. Well, a conflict of interest could be that you're, you know, well, you can't working on grading you can't have a side hack working as a part-time manager for a paving company who might engage in work for the town. No, I know, um, but also like their job performance, right? Like if you're doing it out there chainsawing and doing heavy lifting and then you have to come and work a 10 hour day, right? I don't know, it just gets a little, it's, it's, it's not I an mean, issue right you're now. I mean, you're at a point where you're overstepping at that point though, because I mean, whether I'm building a house or whatever and I'm out there slaving away right. uh, on my own personal stuff and I come in dog tired the next day, that's a performance issue yeah, that I think needs issue, to be dealt yeah. with in a different manner. Yeah. Just to let you know, you can, if you if an outside job does deplete from this job, you can, they can, people, you can restrict that. Yeah. And that's what it says here. Yeah, it's already restricted here. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it says that, yeah. Political, political activity. It sounds like a lot of mumbo mum 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 but it sounds okay, I think. Yeah. Nepotism. nepotism everybody's favorite nepotism. <laughs> well I think you guys changed it. no I don't think we did I think we just I we think it was the rule. we didn't do it I think it was, we felt, we break our own rule. it was felt like you you addressed the issue that right wasn't really addressed and became a bigger issue but I don't think it was there was change to the policy itself um, I think we leave it alone. I think we leave it alone too. Peter, we ran out of time. We got one minute. Is the 2016 <laughs> TAD of Middlesex drug and alcohol policy still the one we're using? I believe so. Okay. Does that have to be changed at some point? No, because I think it follows the uh, commercial vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Those guys. Look okay. Fine. So as Victor points out, we are out of time. So I'm going to say we'll we got through part ten. Right. Good work. So I'll put it on the agenda again for the 18th. Sure. Yep. To start picking, picking up at section part 11. eleven. Section eleven. Oh, we talked about summer hours too. <laughs> okay, that was fun. <laughs> Highway Department report. Update of conditions of town roads and possible discussion of parameters for road crew summer hours. If not a part of the personnel policy discussion. I think we've beaten the summer hours to death, but it's kind of bruised up now. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, road crew? No. Uh, uh... Let's see, I pulled the chipper in to do some more investigating on that to see what the actual issue is with it. Uh, it's pointing towards the block is the problem. I pulled the head off, it wasn't the gaskets. 
um, for the coolant being in the oil, so that's not looking good. Um, in the process of trying to figure out an option for that. Uh, let's see. So the option would be to try and find a used motor yeah. or a rebuilt or? Yeah, yeah. Um, cleaned out a culvert today um, with the fire truck. So we were able to utilize that. Um, basically just trying to get the roads put back together. They're all hardened up, so as yeah. soon as the rain stops, we can really go to town on them. Where was the worst place? I didn't have any problems on Culver so Road. So we Where had was the worst? we had issues on Center Road, uh, right below Zedon. Right. Okay, yeah. We had an issue on Sapphire Swamp, right by the first culvert, just before in the in the shaded area there. Gold. Yeah. And then uh, French Road. Oh right, yeah. French Road had some. Yeah, that was. The portal had, had a few of those big rocks put down. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And we have some uh, fun spots on good old uh, East Hill Road. Yes, we did. <laughs> yep. But it was so much better than last year. Oh, definitely. But why? Oh my God, yeah. Does uh, it have to do with I, the thawing? I think so. Like just yeah. the I don't think the winter thaw. was, we had as deep a frost. Climate change wasn't as bad. Right. Well, we were fortunate. We're never going to have a bad month season again, right? Let's see if there's a report. <laughs> Uh, I am not going to comment on that, <laughs> uh, just for fear of jinxing it. But how did you think, remember how last year you moved out, you took off the tops of the roads and you put them on the side and you carried it away? Did you think that helped? not to do that. We don't want to do that. Oh, really? We did it a little bit on East Road. Bit. A little bit, but a little bit. It, I'd rather have it a last resort. But did that help? I think it might have. No? Let's assume it did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good Let's job. Let's assume Erica. it did. <laughs> yeah. I think that's pretty much I don't know what else. Any news on the trucks or equipment? Uh Freightliner, I pulled that in. I'm just gonna start doing some repairs on that that haven't been done yet. That's uh, that carrier bearing for the differential. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, everything else is working. So knock on wood. Even the old uh, the chloride truck. truck. Yes, chloride I got that truck. running. Yep, that's ready to go. You got that running. What was wrong with that one? Uh, batteries. Batteries yeah. are no good. Did you want to say something, Sarah? Um, yeah. Uh, just to get into the minutes that if it's okay with Eric to uh, submit that uh, application to intend to apply for AIDS and grant program for the highway for fiscal year 24. You want to do that? Yep. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. That's the only one you're going to We do it every year, but uh, it's due Friday, so we don't get it now. So this is just a letter of intent to participate in the SFY 24 Municipal Roads Grants and Aid Program, which of course we want because we want that money. Right, it's for the uh, municipal, the you know, water roads thing, that permit helps pay for that. Yes. And Eric, you want to do that, right? Yes. Okay. And it's basically saying we're going to meet the minimum standards set by ANR. Uh, that allows us to apply for the grants to do so. There's actually a list of about 10 things here that we say we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to pass around if people want to read them. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd scan it. Yeah. I mean, it's basically what we've signed in the, what yes. we've signed in the past. It gives us money. Yes, it allows us to apply for money to, to do that. Yeah. Do we actually post clean water project signs? I've never seen us post any. Well, I haven't been here in the past to do so, so I can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. You know, the day answer. time is running out where you're going to be able to use that excuse. You know well, that. you know, I still could use it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eric, I, I remembered a question I wanted to ask you. Thank Have you. you seen any of the... Um, the elm trees, is that what it is? The, or no, the ash trees. trees. Have you seen them fall and stuff around the road? Have they been a problem? Uh, not so many ash, no. Hmm. 
The popple trees are falling like popples are falling like <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> left and right. Yep. Why? Yeah. Oh, just because they have a very limited next to white pines, they probably have the most limited root structure. And when the ground's soft and the wind blows, and they're big and tall, mm -hmm. over they fall. I would appreciate it if when my neighbor's trees fall across the road and the tops of the trees fall on my land, if you drag the tops back <laughs> over to the neighbor's <laughs> side of the street. Uh, if I get the chipper going, I can clean up a lot of that brush. <laughs> <laughs> you might rent one too. If we have to, I, I, I want to see what I can get. Yeah, that's what I was wondering, if we should rent one. Because there's, there's oh, I need, yeah, stuff need all to, over there's town. There's everywhere that needs to be picked up, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Are you guys, um, have you been looking at uh, replacement costs for excavator or anything like that? I know that. Uh, I started to, uh, they're not that far out, so it's pretty much when we get close to when we're going to want to do it, we can just go ahead and check them out and then it's not like ordering a truck. And have you guys had, I know there's been some conversation around like the, the size of excavator that we that we're going to be looking for. Have you guys like really hashed that out to figure My out? My personal we, feeling, I think we should stick with the same size. The, if we go much smaller, it gets hard to, as it is sometimes it's hard to load the back of the trucks with that one just because you can't see. Right. But if you go too big, then you can't, and then you're fighting power wires all the time. So it's try to find that happy medium. But no, we haven't really, Vic and I really haven't talked too, too much about I mean, it. I mean, isn't it true that for the most part, that machine, when it's been working and in good shape, has done what we needed to do? Absolutely. I mean, you know, if we have a super deep culvert or something like that, we need to subcontract it. Well, you but yeah, we're not going to do a super deep one anyway because we don't have the trench box. Right, but I'm just, or yeah. what, whatever it is, where yeah. it can't reach far enough or down far enough or whatever it is. Correct. No matter yeah. what you do, you can, you can level your way down. Yes, you could. You could step in. Yeah, but is it cost effective to do that? All I'm, all I'm saying is, I think for most of the work we do, no, works. that machine has done what we intended it to do. What is that? That's a 135 class? It's a, it's a 140. It's a 30,000 pound machine. 15 ton. So, uh, just backing up a little bit, and we got off track. Is there a motion to approve this letter of intent? I will. Randy, second. Victor, all those of approving the letter of intent to participate in the SFY 24 Municipal Road Grant in Aid Program, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We approve that. Peter, did you sign it? Yep, he's signing it. Okay, another favorite subject. Considering reimposing a penalty of 8% of the okay. Education portion of future tax bills belonging to taxpayers who filed their HS 122s late per 32 VSA 5410. I just want to clarify that it's up to 8%. 8 you don't have to impose 8%, just up to. Yeah, it's a penalty up to. Right. What did we do in the past, Sarah? 5%. Yeah. And we, we paused it during COVID? Yes. Paused it during COVID and then you resumed it in 2021. For 2021 tax bills, but then you didn't take any action in 2022. Why? We only approved a single year in 21, but. But don't we do it every year? You could make a motion to say from now on 5%, or you could discuss, say, we want to review it every year. I don't think we want to review it every year. If we want to review it. I think it, it should be our policy that we do it and then. If we right. want to change it, we can change it. Yeah, we can then we don't have to do it every year. Yeah. What's the I mean, the problem is, so can you describe for us again, so we remember the problem that occurs when people do do it late? Jordan, do you want to do this? Well, they, I mean, there's no problem. It's, we spend a lot of time resending out tax bills and things like that. And um, this is, uh, people having to file their HS-122 on time. And um, so the people that are not filing their taxes are late, 
you know, if they're not filing their taxes with an April 15th deadline, then sometimes their accountant is unaware of it or whatever, but. You would think by now. You would think would by now people would be on to it. And we have, um, I mean, by the time we get done reissuing all of these, and it's not just us, it's the listers have to go in. It's a lot of time on their side right. to update the records. Um, so it's postage, everything. Right, because what it, what it really means is you have to reissue the tax bill mm -hmm. and then do all the accounting that backs up the tax, tax bill, bill and correct it. So yeah. it's a lot of work, time, and effort for the town. Yeah. It's not a money-making situation. No, and it won't be a money-making situation if we collect 5% either, but at least it will defer some of the extra cost. So I, for one, am in favor of doing this, and heaven forbid if somehow I don't file mine, but uh, anyway. Um, I don't know how okay. everyone else feels. I'm fine with the 5%, so I would move that we uh, reimpose a penalty of 5% of the education portion of future tax bills. Until, so for, until we, yeah. such change is made. Until, or yeah. so, until, until we In perpetuity. Yeah. <laughs> until such change is made or something. Yeah. Yeah. You could just leave it, just reimpose penalty at 5%. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Okay, is there a second to that? Victor? All those in favor of imposing a 5% of the educational portion of future tax bills as a penalty for people who late file their HS-122s, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? We have done it. And when, when will that take effect, Dorinda? Next year? Uh -huh. this November. Year. This year. For the coming, the bills that'll be going out. Like yes, when the yeah. when the bills go out, right? Right. right. The letters yeah, come in July. like July, don't they, or something? Yeah. I'm sorry. The letters come in July. You guys set the tax rate at the beginning of July, and then they pay. Yeah. The right. Okay. Yeah. So, everybody's favorite subject: Welch Park update. You know, you can never retire from the select board because you're the only one who's got what's happening at Welch Park. Well, so I actually, for the first time in a long time, have news on Welch Park. I spoke to John Riley two or three different times, and he has been uh, out of town for a week on vacation, but he's coming back tonight, and he has promised me that tomorrow he will be working on revised documents to do away with Welch Park. So that's the good news. He's ready to go. Here's the bad news. Don't ask me how I didn't know this. <laughs> Don't ask me that because I'm embarrassed that I didn't know it. But our sprinkler system at the fire hall is connected to that sprinkler system. I knew it. <laughs> well, I, I wish you'd, would you'd. I said that and you said, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, so whatever. now what? It is. So. We've got a little negotiating to do um, with Benderson. Uh, a little, maybe a little horse trading, maybe, maybe who knows what. Um, in thinking about it, and I've had now six days to think about it, um, if they are not willing just to say, we're willing to be good citizens and we'll continue to take care of the fire pump, which they might do, that would be ideal. Um, then I think the only fair way to do it is to say whatever the cost of maintaining that fire pump is, we prorate it based on the square footage of the two buildings, in which case, you know, our percentage of those bills would be very small, probably they less than 10%. Sprinkler systems too. It really, it really supports their sprinkler system. Mm -hmm. Okay. Their, their, their building is much larger than ours. It's gonna be three times the size. So Carl's building is not tied into it? No, it is no. Just ours? No, just ours. And the alternative, which would be mega expensive, is to put in our own storage tank, our own pump, our own whatever. And I don't think it makes sense to do that. So anyway, that's a little hiccup on the trail. I'm sorry I didn't understand you were here when you said that, Dorinda, because honest to God, I was so sure that there was no sprinkler system in there. Well, you weren't the only one that didn't think there was. But what if, I mean, we're going to take over the maintenance of the road? Is that 
part of this discussion, yes. right? Yes. So why can't it be like a nice exactly little right. balance? Exactly right. Oh, so exactly we plow right. for them and they pay for the water. No, we plow the road, oh. we maintain the road, and by the way, there's paving that needs to be done on that road. So um, there's some expense. There's some deferred. That. There's some deferred maintenance on the road. Let's put it that right. way. Very much. So. so you know, my position. I mean, they now want out of this mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. So the simple way to do it is to say, you guys have to maintain that fire pump for your building anyway. Yes, we've got our little six-inch pipe hooked up to it, and we obviously are going to maintain our sprinkler system and the line to our sprinkler system, but not the fire pump itself. But uh, I wanted to talk to John Riley about that before I reached out to the, the Benderson people. But that's where we stand on that one. And I am embarrassed, Dorinda, that I did well, not no, know. No, no. I, I mean, I'm just saying I'm, I can't believe that I didn't know. Well, I mean, Carl, all the times I've been Bill in that fire station. Too. He was not under the impression that the fire department. He was, was really not under the impression when I first talked to him. Right. He saw it. And I, and I kept saying, <laughs> Carl, I'm it. telling you. Yeah. I mean, that would seem reasonable to, to say you, you deal with that, you deal with the road, and if that's not appropriate, then uh, prorating it by square footage of building or something to that effect seems reasonable. Um, but at yeah. that point, I would suggest that it's they're maintaining the road costs at this that same prorated okay. amount as well. Of course, I don't know how you do that, but to buy the building square footage or, or road frontage or something. But well, let's see. Let's see. I how think, it goes. I think I'm hoping. I, I'm hoping that they say, you know, we have to do it anyway. Right. You know, it, it whatever. seems like. I mean, when it would be when it would be a big expense if all of a sudden that pump had to be replaced. I mean, it doesn't run that many hours, but it's been there a long time. I will say, I was pleasantly surprised when we went in to look at that fire pump that everything in that building was an apple pie order. Painted up, neat. I mean, the last time I was in there, which was probably four or five years ago. It was a disaster in there. Who was so maintaining it? They are. They are. Or their or their contractor is, but I mean everything. Oh. Would you agree, Eric? Yeah, it was. It that was, everything was in apple pie apple pie shape in there. Wow, it really was. Yep. Well, there so, so much seen. More news to follow on Welch Park, but <laughs> I'm still here, and so is Welch Park. <laughs> So, Dorinda, treasurer's report. Um, I don't really have anything to report. Um, let's see, I filed our offer report for Good. Uh, the past year. That had to be done by April 30th. And um, I'll tell you that, it, and I'm not suggesting we do this, but it, it's because we're under that threshold we really don't have to give them a lot of detail as to how we're spending that money. So, and we have spent a lot like in the past for, you know, um, employee incentives and wages and things like that, that if we get down to it and we have to use that as something that we spent the money on, even though we've already paid for it out of our pocket, we could reimburse ourselves for it. So, but I'm sure. Well, we just need to keep track of those dates and keep, you know, a lot of it has to do with, you know, this delightful building right. that we're sitting in right now. But right. we could probably spend every penny of the money on this if it came down to it. Well, and that's, to, and that was an example in the thing where one town just put, they were putting, uh, doing a fire department and they allocated the whole amount to the fire department. Yeah. It wasn't even complete yet. But they allocated the whole amount. And it yeah. was like nine million dollars or something. <laughs> but so yes, so that might be you know because easily we could spend that doing right. this. Right. Well, we just need to keep track of those dates, which I know you are and we are. Yeah. Well, we've got till next December. Yeah. To allocate it. So. And it sounds like they actually encouraged us to. And they're enc and that's exactly what they're doing. They're encouraging you to just take it and be done with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's December twenty twenty four, Yes. Okay. 
Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Thank you. So, um, Liz. Is insurance covered? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about our oh, wonderful building in your meeting. Yes, we're down. We're excited um, to hear from you. Yeah, so, and Sarah, feel free to, ch to chime in. So we had a meeting yesterday with uh, two folks from VIA, Megan and Jason, I think his name was. Um, and um, they're both architects and they came to the town hall and in attendance was uh, were Sarah, uh, Sandy, Dave, Megita, and me. Um, and they presented to us two drawings. Um, the first drawing was um, taking the existing building and basically redesigning the inside of the existing building, um, moving some things around, um, making it more handicapped accessible, um, having, uh, they would be digging out a little bit of the, um, the back um, out there um, to make it so that it's a one level entrance for someone in a wheelchair, for example. And then there'd also be sort of a little sort of patio type area out on the side. There would be area for parking out here. Um, the entrance would be this way. It would be a one-way entrance. Um, it would require it. The elevator would be um, in a different um, location. It's like a specific type of lift. Um, and basically, um, we really liked the design. It had sort of a. It had our regular vault plus an additional vault. Um, for sort of that stuff that we don't need to get at, that Sarah doesn't need to get at every day, but that is that is still in a vault, so it covers Sarah's needs for a vault. Um, and it has a nice open sort of plan um, with, with plenty of sort of space for, for moving around, and as client guests come into the building, Sarah can see them from her um, position. Um, and... And then the second drawing that they gave us was with an additional 1,200 square feet addition, which was 600 on each floor. Um, and sort of right away, the consensus was that um, we felt that that 1,200 square feet was expensive real estate that really didn't um, serve a purpose that bettered the, the needs of the folks who work here at Town Hall. Um, it still, you know, addressed the, um, it addressed the handicapped accessibility, it changed things a little bit, it sort of put an addition over here, in this area, back over here, um, and, um, and we really felt that for the best interest of the townspeople, it didn't make sense to go with, with an addition. It just seemed like a really costly minimum $300,000 um, build that, that wouldn't necessarily improve um, in the ways that the first drawing did and that met all of Sarah and, um, and what she believes meets the needs of the other workers in the town, plus us as townspeople. It gives a nice space up here that allows for a meeting of you know, 40 people sitting in chairs and tables up front. It has over here a side, um, a private office like meeting space for folks if they need to have a smaller meeting space. It's got a little sort of foyer over here. It allows for, um, there'll be space, um, you know, when we're not having chairs and things out for doing voting, so people would be able to vote here. Um, they would climb a stairs that sort of came out over here to get up here, or the lift would take them directly up here. Um, there would be two bathrooms. There'd be a bathroom up here, and then there'd be a handicapped accessible bathroom downstairs as well. And it just really had a nice flow. Um, and I think um, we all you know, said, this is something that we think we can, with the addition of all these you know, fundings, this is, this, this, is a good, um, this is a good product that we think we'll be able to educate our townspeople on um, and while being fiscally um, responsible um, for the needs of the town. Um, and so then sort of the next steps in what happens next is that they take back some of our thoughts, you know, because we had a few little thoughts on things that might need to get 
changed or around um, on the drawing. And the next steps um, is a meeting um, on May. What is that meeting, Sarah? May? I think it's May 20. Um, 20? We agreed May 25th. Is that right? Yeah. I've got my notes done. Okay. Yeah. And um, and then what is going to happen yeah. at that meeting, Sarah? That's the meeting where um, I believe that's the meeting where they uh, they come back with the revisions and I yeah. think they come back with some money. Right. Okay. Yeah. So so between now and then they're going to have um, a civil engineer come um, to you know assess the other parts of this project. I'm sorry, it's May 30th. May 30th, okay. Um, and so that they can add whatever they need to for, for the civil engineer. Um, and then um, then the, the next meeting is, we'll have one more meeting as a subgroup, right. and then we'll have a meeting to present to the town on June... July. I mean, July 18th, is it? I believe it mm. is July 13th. No, July. they're going to meet July 13th, 3.30 to 5.30, and then you guys are going to have to have two weird meetings in July. That's part of the problem. Right, because July 4th is a Tuesday, so right. we're not meeting on that day, so we'll have the 11th and the 18th, I think right. is what they are. Right, the 18th they'll present to you. Yeah, so on the 18th, they'll, they'll come for about a 45-minute presentation. At that point, they'll have cost estimates, and what they'll have to present to us is um, you know, a report on what they found about the building. Um, they'll have a report. Um, a drawing of the recommended um, renovations that meet the needs of Sarah and the vault and everything else that we want to do. Um, and, um, and then um, they'll have a cost comparison of a brand new building. And that's just plugging numbers, right? They're not gonna, they're, you know. No, they're, they're just gonna say, they're gonna create say, that many much square footage yeah, within for this the building, is gonna this cost is what it would this cost, much money, right. right. Yep. So just thinking about the future, because there's a lot of like moving pieces, as we know, and they're related to funding opportunities. Um, so the MERP funding, the Municipal Energy Resilience Program funding, being the most um, beneficial funding that, that's probably going to be the highest level of funding that we may get, is related to um, all of the work that would be done in the renovation that is related to weatherization and energy efficiencies and moving away from fossil fuels. So that would be <coughs> insulating the walls, the ceiling, the at, I don't think we have a basement. Um, it could be, it would be new windows potentially for, um, for the building. It would be new heating system and cooling system for the building. Um, it could be, um, I think, also, you know, like charging stations or things like that for the outside of the building. Um, and so, when we present it to the town, the way that they describe this to me, because it's been, it's to me, it's like, well, how do we do this? Like, how do we know how much it's going to cost and how much, you know? So, so basically, what they do is they come back with a price and they say, this is our estimate plus a contingency price, like fifteen percent or whatever it is that we decide it's going to be. Um, and then this is what we say to the town. It's going to cost us um, $650,000 to do this renovation. These are the funding sources that we have available. And this is how much we think we can get from some of these funding sources. And so first the town has to buy in to do we even want to do this, right? Do we want to go ahead with a renovation of the town hall? Um, because we can't necessarily guarantee that any of these fundings are going to be there, that, that we're going to get these fundings. I can pretty much guarantee we'll get some of that MERP because they, they want to just give it away, right? And it's not a difficult thing. But to come up with that, what is that price going to be? Like, what is it that we're going to have to bond? Because we will have to bond some amount and the town is going to have to vote on it. But before we even do that, we have to get buy-in from the town that, yes, they want to proceed. Sarah, did it sound like that was a vote even? I or was that, that more is, that was just like a So when you think about when you think about this, when Rumney School was uh, renovate when they were doing their renovation, the school board made a decision to, to renovate. The where the town weighs in is in the funding. Do we want to do we want to vote on this? So the board I mean, whether or not you decide to go out because you think that gathering the most support and traction is the best way to do it, that's your decision. But the board could make a decision to go ahead with this. 
where the public input comes in is the money. So do you right. bond, do you fund, how do you do that? Right. Yeah. But before we do that, we do want to make sure that we're being transparent with the town. They understand what's coming and that they feel like they've been educated on what the work that we're doing and what our funding sources potentially are. Because there's going to be more than the Merck funding. There might be preservation trust funding. There could be um, ARPA, money. ARPA money. Right. There could be other ways in which to, to fund this. Um, but what you know, one of the jobs of our of the select board is is going to be though, regardless, because they, there will be some there will be an ask to pay for this. Is that you know if if we're going to we know that the town hall needs renovations, right? And now really is the time to do it because we have this federal funding, we have this MERP funding. Yep. So we you know we could use the MERP funding to just buy a heating system, right? And say okay, we're just going to do a heating and cooling system without doing anything else, right? But that doesn't, that doesn't seem logical. It's not forward thinking. It's not um, planning for the future. Um, so, so that's sort of where we're at right this moment. So we're looking at, um, Randy, tell me again, the MERP money had to be spent by the end of 2026 or allocated by the end of 2026? Right now, spent. Spent, but that could change too. Yes, yes. There's, there's lots of conversation about whether they're gonna be able to switch to just being allocated by the end of 26. Right. But right now, the, the read on it is that it's gonna be spent. Okay, so that could be a big ask because you know all these towns doing this, not enough workers to get all the work done, they may extend it, right? But that's the way it is right now. So meanwhile, in order for us to even get to that point, we do need to, um, we've done one thing already, which is that we applied for the $4,000 grant. We haven't heard yet, but the assumption is that we're gonna get it. That was a really super duper easy application that basically just said, I might use it for this, I might use it for that, I might use it for this, right? And just basically related to, oh, we might use it for a community event, we might use it to help with grant writing, we might use it um, to pay for a consultant, right? So if we ran out of money for this grant to pay um, BIA, you know, we could use it for that too. So that we expect to get. The next step will be that they're going to announce that the portal is open for us to submit that we want to have walkthroughs of, um, of our buildings. And so then what will happen is they will, I believe, reach out to us to schedule those walkthroughs. Now, Randy, what I might want to get a little help from you on is um, when we talked with BIA yesterday, they said that they thought it was um, pertinent for us to have the level two walkthrough that did the more comprehensive weatherization, like the I think it does the blower door and all that, even though that's not required for the MERP funding. But I think that we want to do that because otherwise, absolutely, and we, we have to do it for this building in particular, and we don't have to pay for that, that's and we don't have to pay for it. Correct. Right. So, um, but I think we need to make it clear that because we're in this process of a renovation um, exploration, that level two is gonna be necessary for us for this building in particular. Absolutely. So those are supposed to come out any day, right? Because they need to start doing this because then in the fall is when the portal comes out. Now, the next question, there's nobody, oh, you're here from the fire department. So I know that your heating system is failing. I asked the question after that webinar that we had, that Randy and I attended the webinar on the, on the Merck, um, was um, we have a fire department that their oil burner is broken and it needs to be replaced before fall. And so can we spend this money? We, I said we do not want to just buy an oil burner because we missed out on the time frame of this whole project, which is to get us. They want us to move away from oil burners, right? So they said, this sounds like, this sounds like a situation where we might consider retroactively paying back for a heating system that we bought before we got the MERP funding. So, um, because again, this is not about, like they just want us all to switch and they certainly don't want us buying an oil furnace in 2023 when two months later we could buy a different system. However, in order for us to get that system, we have to have the walkthrough. And that walkthrough wouldn't necessarily have to be a level two walkthrough, but it could be a level one walkthrough where they look at that heating system, so, they yeah. make recommendations, and then if we're following those recommendations, that's what we get reimbursed for. So that's so, cool. yeah. yeah. Right. So that's what I, I think that, Sarah, do you want to add anything? 
Uh, no, I was just kind of amazed that they could actually use this space and create what I think is a really workable town hall. It addresses the addresses the issues that people uh, in the community have expressed, which is frustration in not having an accessible building. And those front stairs are going to go. And this lot, there's going to be kind of a, a little foyer right here so that when we run elections, people can come in. They're not the stuck lounge. in. Yeah, the lounge. Oh. I don't know Smokers lounge. lounge. To lounge. But, but, you know, people in the winter or November, they're stuck out there on, in, on the, in that horrible little portico. It's backed up. And this way, people will be able to come in, check. We can have enough room for voting, and you can have enough room for meetings. And to make Susan Clark happy, there will be a tiny little kitchenette in the back. Yeah. And there's even a little space for a food shelf if we want to reopen And a little shelf. space in this lobby for the Historical Society yep. to display a few objects. So everybody's happy. And the listers will be separated from the financial department. Listers will be with planning, but there will also be a small meeting room so that should you, when you hold grievances or something, even though they're public meetings, it's much easier. People feel more comfortable having a small office where they can meet a small, you know, little table and chairs. And the same thing, that can also be used for you know, when, when Kevin's going over plans with people. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's, surpri it's surprising to me that it works this well, I think. I yeah, I mean, it is sort of, I think there's a lot of gutting of the whole thing yeah, downstairs. Whole thing you know, so what you see downstairs isn't, and you're welcome to, you know, take a look. Sarah has a copy of the plan to look at. Well, Sarah, this is this public. <laughs> um, Sarah doesn't want anyone making changes. No, She's no, like, no, no, this no, is. No, the BIA had just asked that before everybody, that they were able to make a few changes before or yeah. Off, but that, that's okay. Yeah. So, um, so that's where we are right now. It's kind of exciting, um, and I do think that it is. Um, you know, if we are able to communicate it properly, um, and I know Dave Magida has is, has offered to sort of help us communicate that to the town um, in language that is um, both professional but also <laughs> understandable, right? Because he under he knows yeah, how to read great. these things. Um, and so I think um, that'll we're going to get the minutes of the meeting um, up on the What's Next Middlesex um, website, and um, I'm not sure about the plans. He he sent us something, but anyway, Sandy had asked us to put up some certain parts of it so that people can, you know, see what's Go been on. going on if they so choose to. So that's the update. Good report. Thank you. Sounds yeah. like it was a good meeting. Yeah, it was, it was great. We were very impressed. Have, did they re reach out and respond at all about the uh, four contractors yet? Have they released that? Uh, uh, Merck? Yes. I don't think so, no. Okay. So the last follow that was the last follow up, was the one I forwarded uh, after that meeting with um yeah and then you said that they were um gonna issue who the contract yeah i didn't know if they yet. reached out to so, you no. to issue anything no okay right so there's going to be specific contractors that they're working with that are doing this um going around to the various towns we're going to do the walk service yes. yeah yeah, yeah okay. they basically have four pre-selected pre-approved vendors to uh issue these audits um, yeah. That they're paying directly. Yeah. So. Just quickly. Yeah. So it's the 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 select board makes um, the decision between the two options of refurbish versus build new, and then makes the recommendation to the town. Is that when option two falls away? Um, in my description of option two. Uh, just in, as. Um, just a general question that doesn't have to be specific. Um, so what will end up happening is um, we as a subcommittee will decide on the sort of layout that we think is the best thing that we want to present to the um, to the select board. Um, but we'll also select side by side um, a um, new building. And yes, you're right. So we, we're not going to say to the voters, you have to vote. Do you want a new building or do you want an existing building? We have to make that decision based on what we know, and then we will present to the, and, and then we may say, we're gonna go ahead and do this. We're going to build a new town hall, but we're going to, um, eventually the town is gonna to have to vote on whether or not they're gonna pay for that town hall. And then have they included conversations about what happens to town activities during the 
I mean, it's a little early to discuss, but where would Sarah move? Yeah, to? we have not gotten that far yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just know that the are there are other town clerks who have done who have dealt with this. Yeah. So you know, especially in, after a tropical storm, Irene it was a strange but common problem. Mm -hmm. So there are ways of getting. Maybe it. she'll work at Rumney because there's going to be all these empty classrooms. <laughs> Or a nice National Guard tent out in the parking lot with this, a diesel a trailer. trailer here. Yeah. Yeah. The most important, the most important, I don't mean to, I feel like we're violating the select board rules, but the most important thing is, you know, making sure that all the documents are safe and secure. Right. right. And, you know, the and, and in terms of like what you're saying, we want to make this as transparent as possible. So, you know, you invite the public to these meetings to weigh in so that we make a decision based on what people are telling us. If everyone who came to a meeting said, we think this is a terrible idea. We do not want you to build a new. We don't. We don't want you to renovate the town hall. Um, you know, we might think differently and say, well, maybe this isn't the time to do that. Maybe we do just want to, you know, instead of going through the whole steps and paying all this extra money to then present it to them and have them all vote it down, right? right. But I think the point you made earlier is a very important point. This is a very special time in terms of all this funding being available. I mean, if we were looking to bond for 100% of this cost, I think it's important for them to see the benefit and the savings of doing it now versus doing it later. And you know, who knows what the future might bring? There might be more funding coming down the road, but you know, this is certainly an exceptional time in terms of all this money being available. Mm -hmm. So we need to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Liz. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or concerns? Anyone? Okay, so we have a revised uh, access permit for David and Barbara Carkeet. Yep. Is that how you pronounce their name? Carkeet. 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 Okay. Dave Carkey. Um, and of course, I don't have the previous one in front of me, so I can't compare. So, but I can tell you, they they moved it the entrance to actually on their driveway. It's actually it's not on our road. It's actually off their driveway. So why do we? So why do we need to even give them an access permit? It's right at the end of their driveway. Um, right as you pull under their driveway, it splits. It splits off. right at the end. Yeah. It does. So technically, so a portion, quarter of it will be in our right away. Who closed the call? It's it's really. Yeah, I mean it makes sense if it's right if it's right at the end. Yeah, yeah. but there there shouldn't be any issue with it going there as long as they put their call in there, which is it states that you have to anyway. So. Yeah, it just makes it. I mean, don't get me wrong; it's what they want to do. But why would you want to create all this road? Why wouldn't you just do it there? Them up there? Um, they, may I speak? Yes. Yes, I just warned today a uh, DRB hearing they have. They're creating a two lot subdivision, and because uh, there is a right of way issue, and a, our, they, it has to go before the DRB, so I think that that's what's causing, that's what created this issue. Probably. Right. That yeah. would make sense. Yeah. They have to have a drive permit, or they can't move forward. So that hearing is on the... Well, this is what they want to do. You've approved it, Eric? Yeah. I don't see a problem with it. Yeah. So I think we should approve it. It's is there a motion? It's pretty cut and dry. I move that we accept the permit for the drive on the... Dave, is it David? David. Car keep? Yeah. Property. Is there a second? As outlined in this permit. Randy. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, highway permit for David and Barbara Carkey. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Continuous, what's today's date? Second. And we have, and I believe in the past we have approved these, we have two uh, mowing beds. Uh, Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Eric. One from CM and one from MD. Who are CM and MD, Sarah? 
No, no. I mean, I think that it might be Corey Michaud, who is now our, who's mowing the lawns now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who the other one is. I'm not sure if for bids you're not, you're supposed to know, are you? I don't know. That's all of it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but the, the I don't know either. So, so CM, who we believe is our current right. uh, mower, his bid is $6,310. And B's bid is $8,315. That's a no-brainer. Have we had any issues with no. past performance? No. Mitch said no issues with past performance. Yeah. Mitch said it's a pretty much a no, use big words exactly. It's a no-brainer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm out. I'd go with um, CM. moving CM, and I'll second CM. Okay. So who moved? Vic. So Wall is in favor of giving the Middlesex Town mowing bid for 2023 to CM, who we believe is our current mower. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay, we did all those things on your checklist. Oh, wait, I'm not done with this. So, uh, <laughs> correspondent, Sarah? Nope. Not that I... And we're busily signing the orders over here. Is there anything else that should come before the board? You want to ask? No. And we are adjourned huh? nice and oh, early. No, no, it's I don't know the I'm sorry, what? Bit. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I she don't had know a what question. You're supposed to do. I just wanted, um, there was just a, a itty bitty, teeny tiny little difference between the invoice oh. and the check. But yeah, we can just that. show um, yeah. Dorinda. So, Dorinda, there was one, and sure. there's another slight, there's another small one that's. There were a couple that had some handwritten stuff on the invoices that I noticed. Yeah, I looked, but this one was... What's TL I, aluminum? Anybody know? See. That's the one we're talking about. It's for the fire department. That guy just left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is. Here it is. The check was seven fifty nine, dollars seventy nine fifty nine, but the balance due is seventy nine sixty five. dollars It says, vendor sent invoice late. She spoke to Eric. I don't know. It's just off by a few cents. It's just a few cents. I'll I just ask, didn't know what I'll our protocol was. Okay. Ask, but and then this one here, for some reason, I can see what the 1313 is, but why it was added in, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. The description is March 2023 fuel use, 295 per gallon, 131.260 gallons plus 10 cents added charge. Right. We pay 10 cents over the cost. That's for the city of Montana. So it's cost the plus city 10. Cost plus 10 for the city of Montana. Right. So we have to just hand write it in? Yes, yeah, but because they bill us at whatever their bill okay. is. Okay, gotcha. And then we That's pay weird. 10 cents okay. a gallon for the use. Use of the driveway. I'll just put it like this so that you know that that one has it. Okay, so we are adjourned. We're finishing up okay. the orders, but we are adjourned.